Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how I got this makeup look. You guys really wanted this makeup look after you saw this video. Well, this look. I was all on TikTok with this look and then I, I was getting so much comments so then I asked you guys if you wanted to see a tutorial on this look and obviously the girly said yes so I'm here to deliver. Before we go any further, please make sure that you like comment and subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that you never ever miss an upload be sure to tell me what you want to see at the end and um yeah that's really all i have to say so let's jump into the video tell me what you say now tell me what you say come again if you cannot stay down hey guys so the foundation that i use for that look that you guys were asking me about was my Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Foundation. If if you're not new here, then you know that this is my most favorite foundation in the world. Like, I have oily skin and it gets me through anything, even in tropical climates. But today, because I'm not going anywhere, I'm just going to use my NARS foundation, the Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation. And I didn't really... I never really got my shade down pack in this. It just looks like really light. So obviously with contour and highlighting, you can manipulate your shade. So that's what we're going to use today. Uh, but feel free to use whatever foundation that you have. I'm going to be going in with my Scandinavia um, oil-free priming setting spray. And then the finishing spray. You know. Y'all know the deal if y'all not new here, so. Now that we put on our primer, we're going to go in with our foundation. So with my sponge, I'm going to begin to blend. I feel like this foundation, as I said before, is just not the right shade. But we're going to make it work. Make sure you drag it down to your neck. Blend that sucker in. I have some blemishes, but they're being covered. Y'all know I started Accutane. So I do feel my skin texture starting to, to change a bit. This foundation is just honestly too pink for me. I have yellow undertones. So it doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. But obviously, like, we can fix it, like. Like, you know, for the most part, if a foundation is a tad bit dark or a tad bit light, um, you can pretty much fix it. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so right now I'm going in with my Born This Way concealer in the color Mocha. This color is actually pretty much my skin tone in a bottle. So then I'm gonna, I obviously put it over my imperfections, my imperfections, and I'm going to blend it out. And this it also is going to help even out the pinkness in this foundation. Moving along, we're going to put the Born This Way Concealer in the color Golden Beige. So basically, when you put it down and you let it, you know, almost dry down a bit, it gets thicker. And you use less product, it blends more evenly, and it's not really taking away the product. So sometimes when you put a, um, your concealer down, what ends up happening is if you move it right away, sometimes it could just move all over the place. But if you let it sit and dry down for like two to three minutes, it does what needs to be done. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you get more coverage from it. Right now I'm going to use my Huda Beauty Concealer which has more of like a reddish undertone, which will help with the correcting of the pink foundation. It'll help me look more red as opposed to pink. And we want that. I like to look red, like in my bronzers. Not like red, red, but you know. I like to look bronze, but more on the red side, not really orange. So, uh, again, with that same sponge, we're just going to go in. Um, a little bit does go a long way. What I would say is 
with anything. I feel like I don't want to get my headband dirty because it's so cute. I feel like you should start with the little product and then build it up as opposed to making a mistake and having too much product on your face and you just can't get rid of it. You have to start over. And basically, sometimes you can't blend it out fast enough and you're just stuck with like a muddy face. Like, I like to put my contour higher up so that I lift my face as opposed to lower, whereby I will be dragging my face down. I'm getting my jawline. And if you notice, I'm also dragging it down a bit. And that's also going to even out my neck color. Whereby, you know, which it was looking like I had like a mask or a cast, a white cast. So, whatever's left on this product will basically blend out your neck. I'm going to go back in with the same concealer. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to contour my nose a little bit. Because this concealer can almost look muddy if you're not careful, if you lose control. I'm going to blend. So, now we're going to begin to blend out our under eye concealer. I like to go up. Like, I don't really like to go past the end of my eyebrow. So, right here is the furthest I'll go. Just look up and blend. And then I take that whatever's left on the product and don't be afraid to go down the sides of your nose hit the inner corner of your nose and then in between the process i flip my beauty blender back and forth to blend out the edges don't be afraid to add more concealer if you need to because i personally like a really bright under eye so my concealer i'm going to flip it around to the point and i'm going to draw a straight line down the center of my nose I'm going to let it sit while I blend out my upper lip and my forehead. My camera is overheating. But I want to be able to set this with you guys before I move any further. By going off the side of my nose like that, I help my contour to define my nose even more so it helps give me a more chiseled look and then with the same side i'm going to blend out that nose contour i'm going to blend it all the way up to my forehead for a seamless blend to set in the under eyes with the abh setting powder and banana I'm going to pour a little bit in the top with my same sponge. Oh, don't forget to do your eyes. I like the whole middle of my face one color. You blend out just to make sure there's no creases. The sides of my nose tend to crease too, so I'm going to push the product under my eye. I'm not really... Baking, I'm pushing. Push it real good. And I'm going to continue this process on everywhere I concealed and the corners of my mouth as well because that tends to go first when I'm eating, when I'm talking, chewing gum, you know. I'm just setting everything first, and then I'll go back in with another layer of powder and just put it on top to basically brighten it again. Okay, so now we're going to put our powder on our face powder. I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Powder, 
everything will be listed below. So if I don't say something, just know it's listed below and it should be in the order that I use it. I really try to really get the corners of my mouth. <laughs> the ugly face I was making, ew. Oh, I got powder on my headband. It's not the vibes. <laughs> but um, as you can see, as soon as you start to powder your face, you see your highlight, your under eye highlight pop even more. And then it's going to continue to pop as we go into bronzer. Do not forget that neck. I keep telling y'all, people be out here thinking they killing the game. Yo, be holding down. And that's what I sounded like. <laughs> y'all be thinking y'all killing the game, but y'all neck be snitching on y'all. Y'all neck be gray. Mm-hmm. It be gray. So now we're going to go ahead and go into our bronzer from Morphe. The Glamazon, the Glamour Bronze Drop Blonze. The Glamour Bronze. Sir. Okay. And I like to do circular motions and bring it up, not down, from my cheek up, like towards my hairline. Towards my hairline, circle, circle, circle. You see that? You see that? I already got some color. <laughs> the dims is out. Um, and we're going to do the same to the other side. Don't worry if you feel like it's looking muddy or... Just messy and busy. Don't worry because we will be cleaning that up towards the end. So fret no more, my soft life dainty princess. You are in for a treat. Circular motions on the jawline as well. So everywhere basically that we contoured, we're going over it with powder. And then we're going over it with your powder bronzer as well. I like to switch my brush because normally I have an front table right now. I have my sewing, but also I have my headband. I'm not trying to get dirty anymore. I switch my brush to a smaller one to be able to really get my forehead the way I would like to. I like to do like a crescent moon shape on my forehead. You see that? Don't be afraid to get the bronzer on the part that you highlighted. We just want it to seamlessly blend and look proper. You don't want it to just be like stark white. You don't want it to be stark white in a place and then just boom brown. No, you want everything to marry itself together. Marry, that's the name of the game. We're going to marry. So I like to use my MAC 227 eyeshadow brush. And I like to go on with this color first, this first color, and then I'm going to go on with that one. So this is like a bronzer kind of color. It's like a real warm, light brown. It's almost like, has like an orangish undertone. I really like it for my nose. Especially on the days when I be trying to act like I don't got no face on. But I like to, I always like to contour my nose just to give my face structure. I have a really round face. So I like to bring my contour into my eyebrows and I just go in circular motions up and down with the other. <laughs> now with the other color right here, I just take a little, a little, a little goes a long way y'all. So I'm going to put just a little here, then a little here and I'm only going to define this area and that's what's really going to bring my nose contour together. It is just going to sharpen up that structure and it's going to make me look like I have a really defined nose bridge. That's my secret. Right here we only we do not take that darker color up any higher because then you also run the risk of it being super muddy and we're not here for that. We're better than that. It's nice and smooth and it just gets right into my cheekbone. Now, I don't like to, I used to back in the day contour down here low and no. The goal of the game is to lift your face. So, higher, closer to your cheekbones. I focus that color right in there. Just a little bit. It goes a long way. 
and you focus the color right in there and you know you circle it up. You I'm going to get makeup on my hair. And we're going to do the same thing. To the other side. Lifting our face. Then we're going to do our jawline as well. I like to really do my jawline. Because I do got a double chin. I can't wait to lose weight so that could go. I cannot wait. Because it needs to go. I have no idea why it insists on being this part of me. As you can see, right here looks super chiseled. I don't know if y'all can see it. But on this side, I can see all of my little fat. But on this side, it's like gone. Because we have created an illusion. And we're going to do the same thing on this side as well. So you want to start from the back of your ear. All the way down your jawline. And don't forget, right under your chin. Moving along with the same setting powder that we use for under our eyes, we're going to just set our nose. My nose is something that I do bake. I don't bake anything else, but that nose is going to get baked. You hear me? I like to put it at the side of my nose, up against the contour as well, and make sure my line is super straight and defined. I'm going to take my matte velvet skin powder from Makeup Forever and I'm going to carve out my cheekbones. Remember I told you that it could end up looking muddy? We're going to fix that. We're going to take our same sponge. We're going to flip it over to the other side. We're going to lightly swirl it in the powder and we're going to cut that cheek. It helps if you smile. So you can see the outline and you just clean it up like that. And don't be afraid to blend it out because you don't want a harsh line in. You can do it as many times until you get the technique that works best for you. So. Same thing on this side. can see it is clean we have cut that cheek you take your brush and you blend it so I used to hate blush but now all a bitch do is over blush I love Sephora's blushes oh my god so I used to only put my my blush on the high points of my cheeks so if you smile the high points would be here I would never bring it down to my apples but as of lately, that's the way I've been wearing my makeup, and I like it. And also, if, like, you're new to a bright under eye, you can also put it on your cheeks just to calm the bright under eye down so you don't feel crazy. Because if, if bright under eyes is not what you like or it is your first time wearing it, it might be a lot for you to take in at the moment. Because you might, you know, you get subconscious, you feel like everybody's staring at you. Who cares? It's your world. People just live in it. So... I just dab. I don't swirl. I just literally dab and pack it on. And it really brings your makeup together. So I'm bringing it down to the apples. And I, I listen, one thing about me. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls over blush. And I like to over blush simply too because um, I don't take my blush out with me in the days like if I'm going out, the only thing that I'll pack in my purse, because you know my purses are usually mini purses, and also I never see the need to add more blush. So what I will pack on is like I have a little, little container that I carry like my Laura Mercier setting powder or whatever powder that I'm using for the day. It's mostly Laura, and I'll take this setting brush, and then I'll just take my powder compact just in case when I'm eating. Like, you know, I lose a little foundation by the mouth. And I just, you know, touch up like that. But that's the only thing that I take. 
and I just bring it up. Don't be afraid to put it on your forehead because it literally makes you look like you're just all one color. So it's good. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't look like you just got mad stuff going on. It just marries everything together. You can put a little in your nose too if you want. Hey y'all, I got y'all zoomed in so I could do my eyeliner. Um, I like to go straight out, but I believe that day I winged it upwards. I like a straight eyeliner. I have hooded eyes. I feel like it just looks better on my eye shape. But here we go. So I like to start right there with a point. Okay. I messed up a little bit, but then I like to take that same point and just drag down like this. Right, so now we have like an outline. And then you can just start to perfect your line the way that you like it to your liking. I never do eyeliner on camera because I feel like eyeliner sense is fair and um, it tends to act up. And then I begin to just fill it in like this I'm going to come back here and just straighten up a line okay you want to try to avoid doing the dumb shit I just did which is opening your eyes while they're wet I like a really thick line I feel like it looks so sexy I feel like it looks so attractive you can make your eyeliner as thin or as thick as you want um, I usually do it based on my mood. And then I tend to pull it out a little bit. I don't know why I'm rushing this because it's coming out crazy. Ew. So now we have a cat eye if you will I do like to I think they call this like most Middle Eastern women the Arabic women they wear their eye like this the Egyptians so now you can see what we're working with can you see that okay and now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye so I'm gonna go off camera and then come right back start a show which is Colourpop's eyeliner in the color Big Splash. Um, it will be linked below. This is going to go on my waterline. Oh my god, look how pretty, you guys. It glides on super smooth. It's a gel eyeliner. But it doesn't run. It's like so pigmented. Can you guys see that? Obviously you do. <laughs> it's so pretty. I like to put... I like to use my sponge, my beauty blender. Whatever sponge I'm using to hold just to place underneath my eyes so that I have a placeholder whereby I can you know lean my hand pull down my waterline without smudging or messing up my face because you can get an imprint in your face so now we're going to go into mascara and I'm going to use um the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara in the color carbon this is my favorite mascara in the entire world okay it just does something whereby it elongates your eyelashes um look at that you see that it just elongates them and we're just prepping our eyes for lashes Obviously, we're going to be using Taylor Mink lashes. Those are the only eyelashes I use because they're the best eyelashes in the world. And they're also my lash brand. There is a link in the description bar below that will take you right to the website so that you can purchase a pair. Okay, so I have my beautiful Taylor Mink lashes on in the style full of it. And now we're going to go ahead and head into the lips. I just love this look. I feel like it gives like a real 70s mod look. Um, the headband is definitely helping to give like a 70s look. So I always overline my lips. I already have full lips, but 
I'm still gonna overline it. I just like the way they look. You don't have to overline your lips if you don't want to. I go underneath here because that is also part of your lip. See that? Now I'm going to use another lip liner. I always use two lip liners no matter what. And it's like a, a warmer, lighter color. And it's going to help to blend its color out and have it not look so harsh. Now I'm going to go in with the Artist Couture Gloss in the color Thirst Trap. I love these glosses so much. I'm gonna add one more coat. My chicken hair. I am a 12 year old chicken hair. How pretty is that? So, for I have one last step. So, I'm going to go in with the Garnier rose water just to take like the powderiness off of my face I cover my eyes because you know you get some of this in your eye y'all start watering water your lash right off so this is going to take the powdery effect off my face and then I follow up with the Scandinavia satin spray finishing spray and again, we're going to cover our eyes. I'm pretty sure I was making the most hideous face in the world, but I don't like to get my lips wet. And obviously, I don't like to get my eyes wet. You guys, so this is the final look. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Um... I really love it. Everything is going to be listed in the description bar below. Please let me know if there's anything you want to see. I really want to have a sit down talk. A lot of people ask me what would I do in a situation. So if you have any questions or as to what I would do about something, feel free to just leave it here, I guess. And then I can make a whole video about what I would do if I were in a certain situation. Um... I just want to say that I really, really, really appreciate you guys' support. You guys support me so much. Most of you guys, for the main part, like, you guys follow me on all my social media networks. And um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. You go hard for me. And I appreciate it. And I'm going to find ways to show you how much I appreciate it. <gasps> I messed up my eyeliner, but you lying. You know what? We're going to ignore it. But, um, yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so that you never miss our upload. And tell a friend and tell a friend to come hang with me. Bye. Tell me what you say now. Tell me what you say, come again. If you cannot stay down.